Okay, today's daf, Brachot Kavchet. We're in the middle of a gripping story of Rabban Gamliel, who gets deposed as leader. I actually looked into it. There's definitely people who think that he was get, that they were getting rid of him being the Nasi, the head of, you know, the, the Nasi was usually, what's strange about him being, getting rid, that they were deposing him for being Nasi is that the Nasi was usually something that was hereditary. given to the, it was hereditary and in the, in the house of David, basically, the lineage of David Amelech. Um, but maybe that was it anyway. You know, they were so fed up. Or maybe it was just his position as Rosh Hashiva. So it's a bit of a debate. Um, if you look both in the Shatanshin and the Koran, they say the Nasi. But I think there's others who say maybe not necessarily. Okay, so we started just a very, very, very quickly review. There was this debate. Is Tvil Aravi Rashid You know, by the way, you might think, you know, it's not the hottest topic exactly. But if you think about it, in the, in the generation of Yavne, when the Beit HaMikdash was just destroyed and Tefillah is just being established, it's actually probably very critical how we view Tefillah. You know, is Tefillah how we view Arvit? Is it Rashid? Is it Choval? It, it was all the formation of Tefillah was happening. So maybe that's why it became such a central issue because, again, their whole focus switched from sacrifices to prayer. So it became a very central issue. So maybe that would explain it. Okay, we left with, we were up to the part where basically we have this student who riles things up, which is not surprising when we see who it is at the end of the story because he's kind of a riling up kind of guy. We'll see that later. But basically he asks Rabbi Yeshua the halacha. He doesn't like what he hears. He goes to Rabban Gamliel and then he says, well, don't you know that Rabbi Yeshua says otherwise? And then they make this whole big scene in the Beit Midrash. Rabban Gamliel wants it to be public in front of everybody. And then basically Rabbi Yeshua lies. In the Yerushalmi, it's interesting, he doesn't lie. He just doesn't answer. And then he's kind of, then Ravon Gavliel says, well, don't you say that, you know, and, and then embarrass him, but there he doesn't actually get out and lie. But then he does lie when he asks him straight out. But it's not like he volunteered the information. Whereas here, he kind of volunteers, and you wonder, why did you say no when, you know, you really did say yes? And then we have this whole thing, right? He says, if I was alive and he was dead, well, you know, he can't testify against, he wouldn't be able to testify against me, but it happens that, you know, he is alive and I'm alive, and I can't, I basically, I'm, I'm not telling the truth. And um, I just want you to, I can't remember if we talked about this yesterday, but like there's life versus death, right? There's a lot of opposites here, okay? A lot of them are going to be black and white, okay? We're going to have things that are black, things that are white, and we're going to see Rabban Gamliel's approach is the black and white approach, okay? Everything is either black and white. There's no kind of in-between. And I think this thing about the high and the mate could be connected. You know, it's either death or life, right? Those are opposites. So... Anyway, people get fed up that Rabban Gamliel embarrassed Rabbi Yeshua, and they kick him out. And now the whole question is, who should we put in, its pl- in his place? So we ended, I think we ended five lines from the bottom, Man no Kimle, is that where we ended? Okay, so who should we put in his place? So the first suggestion is, by the way, before we get here, I want to also point out another difference between the version of the Yerushalmi and here. Here it sets up that they kind of have the discussion. Should we do this person? Should we do that person? In the, Bob, in the Yerushalmi version, they choose someone, and then each of the characters mentioned here kind of says, oh, why didn't they choose me? Whereas here, it's, it's coming from a different perspective. So they say, Nukma le Rabbi Yoshua. Well, we can't do that because Balma Sehu, he's part of, that would be really not appropriate to make him. He got into the whole fight with Rabban Gamliel. It would be a real slap in Rabban Gamliel's face. Nukma le Rabbi Akiva, Doma Anishle. Maybe he'll get punished for having taken Rabban Gamliel's place, and why more so Rabbi Akiva than anyone else? Well, the Lele Skutavot, he doesn't have his father's name, because remember, he was a Baal Tshuva, and he doesn't have his father's name to kind of come to his credit. So there's this concept that if you have your father's backing, well, then maybe sin, um, punishment won't come upon you. So right, they were very nervous, you could see, and you see it throughout the story, there's this nervous tension among the rabbis about you know, they, on the one hand, they're very fed up with Rabban Gamliel. On the other hand, they're very nervous. Rabban Gamliel, first of all, he was a pretty scary guy. And, and they're worried maybe they're making a mistake. You know, here they took this very prominent leader and they got rid of him. So they're worried maybe some punishment's going to come to them. Well, he doesn't have schudavot to protect him. Therefore, who do they choose? He's got a lot of things going for him. Hu chacham, he's very smart. Why is that important? Well, it's obviously important. Di is head of Rosh Adi Sheba. Di imach shele mefarikle. If they ask him questions, he'll be able to answer. Vuhu ashir, 
Why should wealth be important? And this is indication that maybe it really was the Nasi job, because if he has to go to the Kesar, right, he was the guy in charge, kind of like the president, right, the president of Israel, you know, he, he goes and dis discusses things with other leaders. So if he has to go to the Kesar, the Roman general, Afu, the Roman emperor, Afu Azavapalachinus, he's got wealth, he's a good person to go. Ezra. Ah, so why is that good, right? He's 10th generation to Ezra. Well, he's got he's, the Ilis vote. The Lo Mate Anishle, and therefore he won't get punished. So, Atuva Amrule, Nichale Lamar, de la Have Resh Mativta. They say, Do you want the job? Interesting. They don't say, We want to put you in the job. They say, Do you want the job? Obviously, they knew it was a loaded item. It's not so simple to go in and take the job in, in place of Rabban Gamliel. So, Amarlu is of Imlach Ba'an Shebete. I'm going to go ask my family, which really means my wife. So he goes and asks his wife. She says, you know, not sure you really want to do this, right? The wife always has good sense, right? She says, you know, it's very nice they want to make you leader today, but who knows what's going to be tomorrow. They're probably going to bring Rabban Gamliel back, which, in fact, she, she's right. She foresaw the future. And you're going to get kicked out. It'll be a little bit humiliating. So, Amr, la, what does he say to her? Better someone should use a cup of silver for one, a nice fancy cup of silver one day, and tomorrow it'll break, right? Better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all, right? Let me have it for one day. You know, it's a very male kind of thing, right? I, I'm okay. I'll, I'll fall, but let me have that moment of glory. You know, I should really do it. Now, I don't think he was looking for the glory, really, but he said, you know, you shouldn't not do something because you're worried about what will happen. So that didn't work. So she tries another tactic. Amrale, late lachivarta. You don't have any white hairs. Remember, we saw the story before. You don't have white hairs, and therefore, and remember, you're only 18 years old. Now, in fact, in the Yerushalmi, he's 16. Okay, so you're only 18, and you're gonna, you know, people are not gonna respect you. So in other words, it's gonna be a huge embarrassment for you. Number one, she said. First of all, notice how she's focusing on the embarrassment. You're going to be embarrassed because they're going to kick you out. And number two, you're going to be embarrassed because no one's going to listen to you. You're not going to generate respect. And notice what word she uses, chivarta. Again, the white. Okay, we have a lot of this black and white stuff going on. So what happens because his hair was black? Hahu yoma bar timnestre shne hava. That day he was 18 years old. Itrachich le nisa, miracle happened va hadru le timnestre dare chivarta. And he grew 18 rows of white hair. Okay, Hainu de Kamra, and this is where we say, where it said that Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah says, Haleani kiven shivim shana, the lo ben shivim shana. He says, I'm like, like 70, but I'm not actually 70. Now, if you think about it, I just want to go back again. We had this, Rabban Gamliel has this one view of the truth, right? My view is right, and everyone has to accept it. Now, I don't know if he thought that he was the only truth, but he wanted centralization of authority, which again is so critical in the generation of Yavne, which was the transition generation from the temple to no longer having Jerusalem, no longer having the temple. So it's very important for him centralization of authority, and to do that, you have to say everything's black and white. And what's Rabbi Yoshua trying to tell him? It's not exactly black and white. You know, Marv, it's Rashut. Okay, with the, you know, it's, it's not so clear cut that you have to do it. Take the Bechor case, okay? The Bechor, it was, can we believe this, right? The Kohen, he's a, he's a rabbi, he's very, it's true, we don't believe Kohanim in general, but maybe he's an exception, right? We can look at things from a different perspective. It's not so clear cut, black and white. Even this hive inmate, if he was dead, I could try to twist the truth a little, right? I could, I could try to deny that I really held that position. It's not, right? Things are not super clear cut. And what is this saying? This is the same thing. I'm not really 70, but I can look like I'm 70, right? It's all this idea that things don't have to be as clear cut as they appear. So now what happens? Tana, now we have a bright that describes things that happened on that day. Otoayom, now this version, it's not exactly, okay, again, I'm not going to have time to, I wanted to do some analysis, probably Yerushalmi, but the page is too long, I don't really have time, so you can look there. But it's much, much more detailed in the Yerushalmi, in the Bavli, than it is in the Yerushalmi. Um, maybe we'll just mention something small at the end. Anyway, and also we're going to see some numbers here. And the numbers are much smaller in the Yerushalmi than they are in the Bavli, because again, the Bavli is describing there were big yeshivas in those days, and, and in the Yerushalmi not. There's actually a big debate about whether this was written um, at the time of the, when it really happened, probably not, was it written in the time of the Amoraim, or many academics think this was written later when the time of the Amoraim was already over, and it more reflected the reality of their time period 
than the Gemara's time period, or than the Mishnah's time period. And the time of the Mishnah, and even the Gemara, the, we always see they went to Bay Rav, they went to the house of Rav, the house of this person. The, there weren't these big academies. Like, this describes as if there's a big academy, there's a yeshiva, there's a lot of people learning there, okay? But it, it's not necessarily so clear that that was really going on at the time this story happened. This is a story that's told by later generations that when you tell a story, you often tell it through your lens, right? Through your life experience. So that's another just issue to put on the side. Um, there's so many things said about the story. You can look up also articles written. It's a fascinating story, and a lot of people have, have analyzed it. Okay, so what happens now? So, They got rid of, all of a sudden we learn, there was a guard at the gate to the Beit Midrash. And we'll see in a minute what the guard was doing. And now they let all the students come in without the guard. Everyone can come in. When he was in charge, what would he say? If your inside is not like your outside, you can't come to the Beit HaMidrash. Now, this is a fascinating, I don't know how a Shomer can look at your inside and see what's going on, right? An x-ray machine in the entrance to the Beit HaMidrash. Let's check out how good a person you are, right? So this is... I heard someone say that it, maybe it's like they wanted to people to deter people from coming. Like people, if they knew they were going to be checked, you know, they didn't want to even bother coming. Or, you know, they had some way of doing it, which might not have been the very accurate way of doing it. But anyway, he had a very elitist attitude about who could come into the Beit Midrash. So, ha'u yoma itafsu kama safsale. Some new benches came in. Well, not just some. We're going to see how many. This is where there's a difference. Probably Yerushalmi. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, pliga ba'aba Yosef ben Dostai ve'rabbanan. Chad amar itvasfu arba mea safsale, 400. The Chad amar, and the other one said shvameo, 700. Okay, and the Yerushalmi, if I remember, it's 80 or 300. Okay, here, 400 is our magic number. Remember, we had the 400 zoos that he pays the woman who he embarrassed. 400 comes up a lot. Here they say seven, right? Seven is always also a number, so 700. They added tons more seats. Now, how does Rabban Gamliel react to this? First of all, what would you expect him to do? Go home and crawl into bed, right? In other words, he doesn't want to show his face. Here he got deposed, but in fact, that's not what happens. But first thing that happens is, kachal shadate to Rabban Gamliel. He gets a little bit upset, and he realizes, amar dilma chas v'shalom manati Torah mi Yisrael. Maybe I really prevented Torah from happening. You kind of look at Rabban Gamliel like he's the bad guy in the story. But you feel a little sympathetic to him. You know, he realizes maybe I really had my best intentions in mind. Maybe, you know, maybe I did it wrong and I really prevented people from learning. By the way, this reminds me of, you know, it makes you think of this big surge of women's learning and all the reactions to it. And is this a good thing? Is it not a good thing? And, you know, the fact that, the, you know, kind of the way uh, Rabbi Sachs said in the video at the Seum, you know, the wall, the, the, uh, what? An aristocracy. That right, but he says the, the doors of the Beit Midrash have opened, right? And that all of a sudden we're letting in tons, tons, tons of people, right? And that's seen as a good thing, but, you know, maybe there's something to think about. So anyway, he says, oh my God, I can't believe I prevented all these people from learning. So let's see what the Gemara says. Was he right or wrong? Okay, so, Achzulei Bechalmei, he sees in a dream, Chatz Bechivare Demalyan Kitma. Okay, again, black and white theme. He sees these jugs that are white, but inside they're full of ashes, which means there's nothing inside them, which means all these people who are coming to the Beit Midrash, they might look like they're good people and they belong here, but they don't really belong. Okay, now that sounds pretty harsh, right? Aren't we kind of saying in this story that it was a good thing they opened up the doors of the Beit Midrash? Well, here the Gemara comes and says, Velohi, don't believe this. This dream was just a dream. What was the point of the dream? They just did it to make him feel better. In other words, God sent him a dream so that he wouldn't go into a major depression. But it's not really true. Okay? In other words, they weren't these white people filled with black. No, they were good. And it was good that they opened the doors of the Beit Midrash. But they didn't want Rabban Gamliel to get into this big depression. So God showed him this dream that would make him feel like it was okay. That's a strange uh, thing to have happened. Anyway, Tana. By the way, this shows, you know, we don't really know. Did, nobody knew his dream, what he saw had a dream, right? This is a story. They're trying to just give you the feel for the emotions going on, and we'll see maybe what the whole point of the story is. Obviously, there could be many points of the story. Yeah, so anyway, Tana. Another bright tip about this. The whole Masechet Adiyot that we learned yesterday, right, where people came and testified about all sorts of halachot. Now that you have a ton of people in the Beit Midrash, people start coming forward with, oh, I learned this from my rabbi, I learned this, I learned that, and you have a ton of Torah being learned. The whole Masechet was taught on that day. 
Bechol hecha damrina boba yom. Any time in the Gemara, we're going to see references or in the Mishnah to boba yom on that day. Hahu yom ahava. That's the day. Okay, the boba yom. Okay, we'll see it referenced many other times. Was that day? There was no halacha that wasn't discussed and explained. And basically, the more people, the more Torah you're going to have. But af now here's the interesting line about Rabban Gamliel. He doesn't go crawl into bed. Af Rabban Gamliel lo manatz momi beit hamidrash afilu shachat. He stayed in the beit midrash. Learning Torah was so important to him that he got over, and this shows greatness on his part, he got over his personal rights. So if you're going to think he's a bad guy, he really, right, he went through some transformation, and, he re- and for him, it was all about Torah. That was most important to him. So he thought he was doing things in the right way. He realized, maybe not exactly, but he didn't go leave. He said, I'm staying in the Beit Midrash. That's my place. How do we know this? It's not. As it says in the Mishnah, Bo Bayom, which was that day, we're going to hear a Another showdown that Rabbi Yeshua and Rabban Gamliel have. Now, in the last showdown, Sir Rabban Gamliel came out on top until they deposed him. And here we're going to see what happens. Ba Yehuda Ger Amoni. So Yehuda Ger Amoni comes in front of Lifnehem, Bebeit Hamidrash. Amar Lehem, Ma'ani Lavo Bekahal. Can I marry, right? Can I be part of the Jewish people? Now, what do we know? You can't accept a Ger Amoni Umoavi Lo Yavo Bekal Hashem. So he says, Can I come? What's the obvious answer? No. So Amar le Rabban Gamliel asur atalavo b'kahal. You can't. Amar le Rabbi Yoshua mutar. Ah, oh, comes Rabbi Yoshua again. Inclusive position. Of course you can. Mutar atalavo b'kahal. You can come. Amar le Rabban Gamliel v'lo kfar ne'amar. But the pasuk says lo yavo amoni umovi b'kahal Hashem. So right, it says in the pasuk they can't. Amar le Rabbi Yoshua v'chi amon umoa b'mkoman hem yoshvim. Kfar alas ancher of melech hashor b'bel et kol haomot. What do you mean? The, the fact that he's an Ammoni doesn't mean he's the original Ammoni. Uh, the Assyrians came when they did the, the, when they took us out of Israel. What did they do? They moved everybody around. That was their dislocation. That was their approach. So the people living in Ammon are no longer the Ammonim. So of course you can come. You're not really an Ammoni. How do we know this? First of all, it's very interesting. What, is he, what does that mean? He tore down the boundaries. It sounds exactly like our story, breaking down the boundaries. Okay, so basically, he took down the boundaries and everybody got moved around. And here he uses a halachic principle. Anyone who come right, when you have something, you're not sure what it is, this guy could be an Ammoni, but it's Suffolk. And we assume he came from the majority. The majority of people in the world or in this whole region aren't Ammonim, and therefore we can accept him. So that's Rabbi Yeshua's approach. Amarlo Rabban Gamliel, he's not going to let go. He says, God promises, I'm going to bring the Nevi'im. He says, I'm going to bring the Ammonim back to their land after this. So it's true the Assyrians messed everything up, but, the, but God promised the Ammonim are going to come back. So there's your proof. So, Ukfar Shavu, and they must have all gone back already based on the prophecy. Amarlo Rabbi Yeshua, you can't prove things from prophecies. Balo Kfar Nemar Veshafti Yetshvut Ami Yisrael, Vadayin Lo Shavu. Says it says that also about us, and we haven't all gone back to Israel. So, Miyad Hitiru Lavo Bakahal. The the ruling in the Beit Midrash is like Rabbi Yeshua. Here he wins out finally, right? So Amar Rabban Gamliel, Rabban Gamliel, all of a sudden says, Ho'il Vahachi Hava. He says, if that's the case and the rabbis are already ruling like me, then I must, I have to go make my peace with Rabbi Yoshua. I'm sorry, if they're ruling like Rabbi Yoshua, it must be that he's right and I've made a mistake and he's right. That's the sign of a good leader, realizes his mistake and goes to appease the other side. Kimata lebete. Now it's interesting. Somehow they leave the Beit Midrash. It must have been nighttime. They go home. And what does he do? He doesn't, you can imagine, he didn't want to do it in the Beit Midrash. It's a little embarrassing. You want to have a private conversation. So he goes to Rabban, Rabbi Yoshua's house. When he gets to his house, now what's the first thing you'd expect him to say? Hi, I'm sorry for what happened. Okay, this is not, okay, you see that Rabban Gamliel still has his old side in him. Okay? He sees the walls of his house are all black. From the walls of your house, it seems like you're a, now this could be a blacksmith or a, um, there's other, inter, um, like you're dealing with coals. You're a coal, you're a smith, okay? In other words, what's he saying basically? Wow, you're really poor. I didn't realize how the other side lives. Like I see you in the Beit Midrash. We're all kind of, you know, you're, you're almost my equal there. I'm not exactly, but, um, but. So black. 
What? Like the black white theme. Right. So again, you have the black white theme. You're, you know, and look at you, and and then all of a sudden he judges him based on what the walls of his house look like, and he's like, oh my god, look at you, you're so poor, I can't believe you live like this. So what does Rabbi Yeshua say back to him? Rabbi Yeshua is obviously still pretty annoyed at him. Amarle oilo lador shatar parnaso. What a terrible thing that you're the leader of our generation. You don't understand the struggles that we go through. How they support themselves and by what they're getting food. Right? You don't even know what's going on. It's interesting, right? And the whole thing was, he said, you have to be tohol kibaro, but he wasn't looking on the inside of people. He had no idea what's going on with the people. And what's this saying again? You can say this is a critique of Rabban Gamliel, but I don't view the story that way. I don't know that the story exactly happened the way it happened. It's a critique, especially if you say it's written in a later generation. It's a critique of the rabbis of their time. It's a critique of their leaders. It's saying, this is bad leadership. Leaders need to understand the people. Yes, Rabban Gamliel, you came from a house of Nassim, and you're wealthy, and you have all that. But you have to understand the Amcha. Right? You have to go and understand, see what they're living like. You have no clue what's going on. He says, I admit to you I was wrong. Please forgive me. He ignores him. Right? He says, thanks, but no thanks. He says, please do it for the honor of my father. Okay, You're not going to do it for my, right? This, this goes on all the time with, in, with relationship with God. Right? They say, oh, if not because of me, it's good vote. Okay, so Jew Bishvilkot Abba, it's also, we saw this earlier in the story about this Huda vote of Rebbe Lazar ben Azariah. P.A. So he says, okay, fine, I'll make my peace with you. Um, Amru, now the issue is, now if I, we talked about before the nervousness of all the rabbis, so now they say, Amru, ma nezo valemelhu le Rabbanan. They were a little hesitant to go tell the rabbis, because now the rabbis, they were all nervous, what if we made a mistake? So now they're nervous, how are we going to tell the rabbis that they made a mistake and reverse everything? Amar lehu hahu koves ana aziyana. This is very strange. A launderer comes and says, "I'll do it." Okay. Now, what's unique about a launderer? First of all, what does a launderer do? He it's takes white. black and he turns things white. Right. Even mm. the word used, like on the malacha on Shabbat, is milabno to launder is from lavan to make things white. So they say the launderer says, "I'm going to go." And what does he do? He gives a mashal with words of that a launderer would use. Shalach lehu Rabbi Yeshua lebeit midrasha. So he sends him to the Beit Midrash to say the following. Man de lavish mada yobash mada. The one who wears the uniform, wears the uniform. Uman de lo lavish mada. But one who's not supposed to wear the uniform. Yemar le laman de lavish mada. Shlach matcha ana al Would he go to the one who wears the uniform and say, give me the uniform and I'm going to wear it? Okay? Meaning, Rabban Gamliel, he was the one with the uniform. He's the one who's the ruler. And it's not appropriate that someone who doesn't, not supposed to wear the uniform, takes the clothes of, right, would say, give me your clothes and I'm going to be in your place. Sounds a little like the perm story, right? Where they take the clothes, it's all about the clothes. Amar lehu Rabbi Akiva le Rabbi. Now Rabbi Akiva says to the rabbis, Troku gale de lo leite, avde Rabban Gamliel, ulitzaro le Rabbanan. Shut the doors. Interesting. They had this whole open door policy, but not to the people. He says, these are people that work for Rabban Gamliel, and they're going to just come and torture us. And he wouldn't accept, okay? He wouldn't he didn't accept. Understand what the he didn't understand that it was coming from Rabbi Yeshua. So he says, this is just Rabban Gamliel's people trying to tell me what to do, and, you know, I'm locking you out. I'm a Rabbi Yeshua. Mutav de'ekum ve'ezal ana legabayu. He says, I guess I have to go myself. Why he didn't go himself in the first place is a good question. But he says, I guess I have to go myself. Atatarif ababa. He goes, he knocks on the door, because now the door is shut. Amar le, and he says to them the following. Mazet be mazet yazet. Now, Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria is a Kohen. So he gives him an analogy in the wording of a Kohen. Okay? And a Kohen is the one who sprinkles. So a sprinkler, who's the son of a sprinkler... Right? Meaning, a Kohen is the son of a Kohen. Yazet. He's the one who does the sprinkling. If you bring in someone who's not, doesn't come from the lineage of Kohenah, and they're going to go tell the Kohen what to do, that's, and start telling him your water's no good, your apron is no good, you know, all your stuff that you're using in the baby, that's not right. That's not appropriate. So, they realize, they understand the analogy, especially when he talks to Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah and his, you know, about Kihuna. So, Amarli Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says, Rabbi Yeshua nitpayasta, klum asinu ele He says, have you, have you come to peace with Rabban Gamliel? Because we only did this, the whole reason why we're doing this is for your respect, and if you're okay with it, then we'll go with you. Lemachar aniva atan nashkim lepitcho. So tomorrow we'll go to his door. It's interesting that they didn't go right away. 
right? They push it off one more day. Sometimes, you know, to do something big, you want to just think about, you know, how and what. And anyway, I don't know why, but he says tomorrow we'll go together to his door and we'll bring him back. Amre hechini avid. So now they say, well, what are we going to do? Now we're in a bit of a bind. This goes back to what Rabbi Lazar Nazaria's wife said to him, you know, you're going to get kicked out. Niavre, if we kick out Rabbi Lazar Nazaria, gemire ma'alim b'kodesh ve'emoridim. We learned that you can only go up in sanctity. You can't go down, so we can't take them off. Nidrash mar chadashab to mar chadashab to why don't we just switch off weeks? Ate l'kinuye. That'll cause problems for a bangamlia because he'll be jealous that someone has basically become his equal. Ela lidrash rabban gamliel tal to shabte rabbi lazar ben azariah chad shabta. We'll do three and one, and that way rabbi rabban gamliel will have his position, but rabbi lazar ben azariah won't be totally put aside. Bahainu damar mar, and this is where we see mentioned in other places. Shabbat shel mi hayta shal rabbi lazar ben azariah hayta. They ask this question: Whose week was it? And they say, Oh, it was the week of rabbi lazar ben azariah. Now the interesting line at the end of the story: They tell us, Oto tami rabbi shimon ben yochai hava that. Talmud, who started the whole thing, was Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai, who is known to also have that approach of Rabban Gamliel. Again, this is maybe what they talk about, the, the law of diminishing, um, what do you say? The, diminishing characters. Right? Diminishing characters. Diminishing characters. That we try to kind of keep all the characters that are the same, you know, it, together. It's that kind of attitude. Everything's black and white. And the story is trying to tell you, no, there's room for machloket, there's room for lots of opinions, Everybody has to listen to the other. Everybody has to be allowed in the Beit Midrash, and things are not black and white. Okay, so again, we could go into many more things here, but I'll leave you with that. You can, you know, delve further at your own time. Okay, moving on in the Gemara. V'shal Musafin kol hayom. So now you can say Musaf all day. Amar Rabbi Yochanan v'nikah poshea. If you do that, you're a poshea. You should really. Okay, interesting. He uses such a strong lashon. Poshea means you're a criminal. Okay, you did something wrong. You were negligent. Um, so, you know, um, he thinks you shouldn't wait till all day to say it. Tanu Rabbanan, according to the Brayta, Ayula Fanab, right? Basically, he means you should hold like Rabbi Yehuda, who says until seven hours into the day. This we already saw. Hayula Fanab, Shtei Tfilot, the Chacham and Chava, Chacham Musaf, you didn't have a Musaf in the morning, you'd have a Mincha. Uh, you have Mincha now upon you, M Musaf. Mitpalel Shem and Chava, Harkel Mitpalel Shem Musaf, Shazo Tidira, Vazo, and El Tidira. We said, right, that one. Happens more commonly in Mincha, that, that's why Mincha goes first. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Mitpadal Shem Ustaf, Bachar Kach Shem Mitpadal Shem Mincha, Shazo Mitzvah Oberet, Bezo Mitzvah Sheen Oberet. According to Rabbi Yehuda, it's such a small window, don't wait for Musaf because you might miss the time. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, he paskins, Halacha, the Halacha is, Mitpadal Shem Mincha, Bachar Kach Mitpadal Shem Ustaf. Okay, the Halacha is first Mincha, then Musaf. Rabbi Zera, Ki Abachalish Migir say, when he was already too old to learn, he would go in front of the house of Rabbi Natan Bartuvi. Remember, I said they all learned in their houses. And Amar Kichafe Rabbanan Az Ikumikamayu. When they come out, when all the rabbis come out, I'll stand up before them, show them respect. Maybe I'll learn a little something and I'll be able to get rewarded. I'll get Sahar for showing them respect and maybe hearing a little bit of Torah from them. But he didn't have the patience, he couldn't sit and learn in the yeshiva anymore. Nafik Atta Rabbi Natan Bartuvi. So he came out. Amar le man amar halacha be midrasha. So he said, what halacha was learned in the be midrash today? Amar le hachi amar Rabbi Yochanan ein halacha ki Rabbi Yehuda da amar mitpalel adam shom musaf achar kach mitpalel shem mincha. We don't pass like Rabbi Yehuda in this case, but first most of them mincha. Amar le Rabbi Yochanan amara. He says Rabbi Yochanan said this. Amar le in. He says yes. Rabbi Yochanan said it. Tana mine arba in zimnin. He repeated it. Now remember, he was already weak, so maybe that's why he repeats it forty times. Okay, kind of to get it in his head. So Amr says, so Rabbi Natan Bar um, Bar Tuvi says to him, Chadahilach, O Chadatilach. Are you saying this because it's, um, right, that you never learned anything else that Rabbi Yochanan said? It's the first thing you learned of his, and that's why? Or is it Chada? It's a play on words here. Chada means the first one, or Chadat means Chadash, because tough and shin switch in Aramaic. Is it something new to you, meaning because you thought someone else said it? And that's why you keep repeating that Rabbi Yochanan is the one who said it. It's new to me. I thought Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi was the one who said it, and that's why I kept repeating that it's Rabbi Yochanan. This goes back to what we said, I think it was yesterday, about the importance of saying something in Mipi Rabo and saying something in the name of the person who said it. And we... I think sometimes when we read the Gemaras, particularly at a pace of Dafyomi, we don't pay so much attention who said what sometimes, but it's very important to keep in mind who said what. 
אמר רבי יהושע בן לוי, כל המתפלל תפילה של מוספים לאחר שבע שעות, לרבי יהודה, according to רבי יהודה's opinion, if you daven מוסף after seven hours into the day, now we're going to see what the verses say about you, okay, this is again, scare tactics. עליו הכתוב אומר, נוגי ממועד אספתי ממך היו, אספתי ממך היו. So what does this mean? My mash madahai nuge lashon de tavrahu. How do you know that that nuge means broken? In other words, you're going to be broken because of mo'ed, because of the timing. In other words, because you missed the time for something, you're going to end up broken. So they say, how do you get that nuge is lashon of broken? Kedem etargem Rav Yosef, as Yosef, Rav Yosef was metargem this pasuk into Aramid, he translated, tavra ate al sonehon de be Yisrael, al de achru zimna mo'ada bi Yerushalayim. Okay, this is a, they're going to be broken, right, like a destruction is going to come to those who hate the Jews, which is a way of saying to the Jews, right? People didn't like to say it's coming to the Jews, so they changed it to the, hate, the ones who hate the Jews. On the fact that they delayed the times of their holidays or their times of their, right, it's not clear, Moadim usually we say holidays, but here it seems the times of the prayers, okay? So that's how we translate this first and that's how we get it. Um, someone's going to say something very similar. Now we're saying if you daven, not musaf late, but you daven shacharit late. According to Rabbi Yehuda, Allah katuv omer, again the same pasuk. Here he says it's not broken like destruction, it's pain. Pain is and suffering is going to come to you. As it says in the pasuk, my my heart, my soul is um, what's the word? Dafa, like embittered, embittered from pain. Okay, mituga. So their tuga and nuga are the same root. Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak Amar Mehacha betulota nugot vehimar la. That's a pasuk from should be familiar to you from Echa, right? They're nugot vehimar la. Okay, they're pained, <laughs> afflicted. Rav Avia Chalash velo ate le pirka de Rav Yosef. Okay, now we have a story. Rav Avia was weak and he didn't come to the drasha of Rav Yosef. Le machar ki ata, when he comes the following day, the Beit Midrash, bai abai la anu chedate de Rav Yosef. This is interesting because the story starts out as if Abai is trying to help Rav Avia. What's he trying to say? He wants to be, make sure that Rav Yosef doesn't get angry at Rav Avia for not showing up to Shear the day before. Okay, again, you see this attitude in the Beit Midrash. Okay, we keep seeing this issue of the attitude, right? We saw it again. We started with the story of the student with the Zona and how he ends up committing suicide because he's worried about what the people in the Beit Midrash are going to say about him and how they're going to judge him. Then we have the whole story with Rabbi Shur and Rabban Liela about how people are judged in the Beit Midrash also. And now we have this story, right? He's worried he's going to get in trouble for not showing up. To, in a, some, it, it's interesting. Here, Rabbi is actually trying to protect him. And he says, let me protect you from the wrath of the rabbi who's going to get upset with you. Okay, but again, you see, again, whether this happened or not is, is not what's important. It's the rabbis are being very self-critical, which is very interesting. They're saying we have issues going on, right? Just like they talk about the Talmudim of Rabbi Akiva, they all died during Sefirat Omer because of the Sinat Chinam. There's a lot of critique of what's going on in the Beit Midrash. We're going to see this all throughout. Um, so, and they're, they're, not, they're willing to kind of say we have issues and we have to deal with them and trying to teach the people messages through their stories, values, what, what, what's supposed to be your priorities. So, Amarle, my time alo atama the pirka. Why didn't you come to the Beit Midrash? Amarle, to have a chalish libai velo matzina. I was, wasn't feeling well and I, you know, I couldn't come. Amarle, amai lo ta'am midi va'atit. Why didn't you eat something? And then if you had eaten something, you, you would have had the strength to come. Amarle, lo savarle mar lahad ravuna. Don't you hold like ravuna? Dam ravuna, asur lo la dam sheet om klum kodem sheet palel tefilat musafin. Don't you know that ravuna says you can't eat? This is what Ravavia tells Abai. I couldn't eat before because I'm not allowed to eat before musaf. Amarle, ibaile lemar. Obviously, it was the day that was musaf. Ibaile lemar litzluyet slota de musafin biyachid vilit om midi ulamaiti. Said you should have dava musaf at home. And then come to learn. By the way, you see, learning is more important than davening b'tzibor, right? Don't daven musaf b'tzibor. Daven musaf on your own. Eat, and then come to the Beit Midrash so you don't miss the shir. Amar le, obviously the shir must have been before musaf. Amar le, velo savar le mar lahad amar rabbi yochanan asur lo ladam sheyatim tefilato letefilat tzibor. But didn't we learn, okay, we have this discussion. Abayi keeps, and then, again, Abayi was coming with good intents, but every time he says something, right, he tries to, Challenge it. So Rav Avi says, what do you mean? I couldn't daven musaf at home because it says you're not allowed to daven before the tzibor is davening. So Amar Leh, 
So Abayah says, what do you mean? Love eats Marla. Wasn't it said about that statement of Rabbi Yochanan? Amar Rabbi Abba. Rabbi Abba said, B'tzibor shanu. Okay, that, that's only if you're in shul, you can't start davening before the tzibor davens. But if you're at home, you can daven on your own schedule. It doesn't matter. So what do they point out here? So we end with, after Abayah was trying to say, I don't want to get you in trouble. In the end, Abayah says, really, you should have eaten. Davin must have at home eaten and then come to the shear. So he doesn't really justify him in the end. But lay till chata. Now they're just coming to tell you the halacha about this. Loka Rav Huna of a loka Rav Yisshov ben Levi. We don't pass the not like Rav Huna, not like Rav Yisshov ben Levi. So I don't know if you remember who said what. So the Gemara is going to tell you. Okay, Rav Huna hadamaran. That's what we just said, which was. We don't paskin that you have to, you can't eat before Musaf. You can actually eat before Musaf. I remember when I was in camp when I was a kid. I don't know if you had this, but in the camp I went to, so it was like the best time of the week. We would daven shacharit on Shabbat. Then we'd have kiddush. We'd go and eat this delicious babka. It was like the best food they had in camp. And then we'd, you know, then we'd go back and have, right? It was good on two counts. It was good because the babka was delicious and it was good because shul was shorter, right? You, and it wasn't shorter, but you break it up, which as a kid, you know, it's long to sit in shul. So, Maybe as an adult also, but anyway. So, what about Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi? Where don't we pass on? Like him, Dama Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Kevan Shigi Azman Tfilat HaMincha. Once Mincha comes, Asur lo Adam Shit Om Klum Kodem Shit Palel Tfilat HaMincha. We also don't pass on like that. When Mincha time arrives, you don't have to not eat, okay? There was this whole issue. Why they say don't eat? Because if you don't eat, then you won't forget to daven. We're worried if you start eating, you might forget to daven. So it's interesting, they say you don't paskin like this. Some of them are fresh from say, it's not exactly true we don't paskin this way. Maybe not at Mincha Gedola, like at 12.30, but at 3.30, yes, maybe you can eat. Maybe you can eat a small meal, but you can't eat a big meal. Like you can't go to a huge suda when it's, you know, you have to have a Mincha. Anyway, okay. Rabbi Nechunya, okay, new Mishnah. Rabbi Nechunya ben Akaneh hayam et palel b'knisato l'beit hamidrash ubi yitziato. This is very connected to the story. He would pray when he went into the beit hamidrash ubi yitziato, and when he left the beit hamidrash tefilah sarah. Because why? The beit hamidrash was a bit of a dangerous place. We already learned that. Amru lo mama kom l'tefilah zo. What's the idea of this tefilah? Amar lahem b'knisati ani et palel shelo yeera dvar takalal yadi. I don't want any bad things to happen because of me. Okay, now again, there's jealousy in the baby trash, there's mistakes, he could teach something incorrectly, that would scare him. I thank God for the fact that I can go to the Beit Midrash. So, Tano Rabbanan, the brightest, they start off by quoting a Braita. What does he say when he comes in? Here we get the Nusach of his prayer. Nothing bad should happen based on what I'm doing. I shouldn't make a mistake. My friends will be all excited that I made a mistake. Okay, and then, again, shows the attitude of people in the Beit Midrash. I don't want to say something that was impure, call it pure, and something that was pure, call it impure. And also, he prayed for other people not to make mistakes, and that I shouldn't be happy when they make mistakes. And it makes so much sense because it's all about power, right? Knowledge, power. We know this goes on all the time. Right? You might think, oh, it's the Beit Midrash, everything's pure in the Beit Midrash, but no, people's personalities, just like we mentioned earlier, and we'll see this again when we get to Yoma, all the fighting that went on with the Kohanim, right? Trying to do the Avod, and everybody wants their part, and everybody wants to be first, and everybody wants a turn. What does he say when he leaves? And this is the tefillah that we say as part of the Siyum, that we, in our group, we don't say it because it's a little bit insulting. Um, Thank God for the I'm among those who go to the Beit Midrash. I'm not like the people who sit in the corners. We all wake up early. I wake up to learn Torah. They wake up to do nothing. And some people think this is talking about people who work. Okay? And I work and they work. I work and I get rewarded. Right? They might get money, but they don't get the real reward. Ani ratz vehem ratzim. Ani ratz, right? We both run. Ani ratz lechei olam haba vehem ratzim lebe'er shachad. I'm running to get olam haba, and they're running to hell. The pit of destruction. The pit of destruction, but, right? It's a way of saying to hell. Okay. Kishe tanu rabbanan. Kishe chala rabbi Eliezer. Nechnesu tamidav levakro. We're now going to have two stories of people on their deathbeds. So first rabbi Eliezer. His students came in to visit him. Amru lo rabbeinu limadetanu orchot chayim v'nizkebem lechei olam haba. Teach us the way of the world, right? He's about to die. I want right, to, we want to know how to live, right? Like Tuesdays with Maury, right? The, you know, let's see, before you die, that's when people have the best insights. 
Amar lahem, hizahu b'kvod chaverchem u'menu b'dechem in ahigayon. Okay, first of all, be careful for respect of your friends. That's why this is coming up now. Have respect for others. And keep your children away from higayon. Okay, it's unclear what this higayon is. One explanation is that it's learning like pshat without learning the drashot of the rabbis. There's some other things what it is, but we'll leave it at that. Voshivum ben berkei tamadei chachamim. Keep them with, you know, among the ta- learning among the tamadei chachamim. And when you pray, remember who you're standing before. And that's, what, that's how you'll get the um, world of the afterlife. So now we talk about Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai. He was the one who basically asked to have Yavne, right? right? He sees them come to visit him and he starts to cry. Amrulo Tamidav, Ner Yisraelim, Mudi Yemeni, Patisha Chazak. Right? You, you great leader. Mipne Ma'ata Bocheh, why are you crying? Amar Lahem, Ilu Lepne Melech Basar Vadam Hayumolichim Oti. If you were bringing me to a regular king of the world, Shayom Kanu Machar Bakever, that today is here, but tomorrow he could be in the grave. Shem Koes Alai, Enka So Kasolam. If he gets angry at me, well, one day he'll be dead and he won't be angry at me anymore. Vimosrani, and if he puts me in jail, Eni Surawi Surawalam, I won't be in jail forever. Vimi Mitani, and if he kills me, Eni Tati. Because I have Olam Abba. Vani Acholafai Sobet Vari, Mula Shachadobe Mamon. I can try to convince him that I, you know, to let me out. I can try to bribe him. Interesting, right? He brings up bribery. Af Apichen Ayiti Boche. And if, right, he, he wanted to kill me, I would cry. Vachshav Shemolachim Oti Lifnei Melech Mache Amlachim Akadosh Borachu. But now that I'm going before God, Shu Chayv Chayam La Olam. He'll live forever. Ula Olam Ola Me Olamim. Sheim koes alai kaso kaso lam. If he gets angry at me, it's forever. Vimos rani, and if he puts me in jail, isuro isur olam. It's forever. Vimi mitani mitato mitad olam. It's forever my death. Veini acholafai so bit barim velo la shachadom mamon. There's nothing I can do. It's interesting because right, we do think our tefillot are effective, but he's basically saying I could try, but you know I won't necessarily get anywhere. I certainly can't bribe him with money. The Lord, Ella, she is the Panash Ned Rahim. There's two paths in front of me. A Hachal Ganadem, a Hachal Ganom, right? One is Ganadem, one is hell. The Enio Deb is a Molochimoti. I have no idea where I'm going. The Lord, if and you expect me not to cry, okay? What's he basically saying? You know, look at life and, and think really about what you're doing because, right, it's very, right, what well, God determines in the end everything. Amrulo, Rabbeinu, so they, it's interesting, they don't even react, okay, they don't even know what to say, because there's nothing to say to a statement like that. So what do they say to him? Barcheni, give us a blessing. Amar lahem, he says to them, Yihi ratzon, shetehei mora shamayim alechem kemora basar badam. The way you fear humans, that's how you should fear God. So what's their reaction? Amrulo tamidav, ad kan, that's it? You only need to fear God the way you fear humans? Like, wouldn't you think you need to fear God way more than you fear humans? So it's a great line. Amar lahem, ulevai. Halivai, you should fear God the way you fear humans. And he says, Teidu, Kshadam over Avera, Omer Shalo Yir Ani Adam. When he goes to sin, he doesn't look for God, is God watching me? He looks to see if someone else is watching me, humans. If you feel that way about God, you'll be in good shape. Okay? Bishat Ktirato, as he was dying, Amar Lahem, Pinu Kalim Mipnea quickly get all the Kalim out of the house because I'm about to die. And if you leave the Kalim in the house, what will happen? Tumat Ohel. Right? He was. It's, what was he doing? He was thinking about other people on his deathbed. The king Chizkiyahu was coming to bring me back to, you know, up to Shamayim. Why Chizkiyahu? Some people say he was a descendant of Chizkiyahu. Some people say Chizkiyahu caused a lot of Torah to be learned and so did he. They try to make connections. I don't know the exact reason. Okay, new Mishnah. This Mishnah is going to connect back to our story, and it'll be a good way to end today's stuff with this. Um, I mean, we're not going to finish with the Mishnah, but it'll, it's a good way to close the story that we started today. Rabban Gamliel Omer, Bechol Yom Vayom Mitpalel Adam Shmona Esrei. Every day you have to have a Shmona Esrei. Now, you think this is pretty obvious. We know you're supposed to have a Shmona Esrei, but you'll see that not everybody agrees with this. And again, this is Rabban Gamliel being very straight, and it's black and white. The Shmona Esrei, that's what you have to do. Rabbi Yoshua Omer, Me'en Shmona Esrei. You could say a shortened version. If you have to get to work, you, have, you don't have enough time, you could say the shortened version where the middle blessing kind of connects, right? It's a combo blessing of all the other ones. Most people say this is Havinenu, what we say. Rabbi Akiva Omer, meaning, right? We, it, it's not black and white. You can come up with other ways to do things. Rabbi Akiva Omer, he kind of is in the middle position. It depends. Now you see the issue is not just time. 
It's that people didn't have Sidurim and they didn't necessarily know the Nusach. This is in the time when Tefillah is developing. So he says, if you know the words by heart, then it's Palel Shmona Esrei. Im lav, if you don't, then Me'en Shmona Esrei. Then do the shortened version, and that's easier to memorize. Rabbi Le'ezer Romer, here comes the big line, Ha'uset Tefilato Keva, Ein Tefilato Tachanunim. If you make your Tefilah Keva, okay, this goes against... This the first mission was very much this till this time, this till that time. Everything's very, very set, like Rabban Gamliel, and maybe that's why this story is here. He says if you keep everything set and rigid, well, your prayer is not going to be real, legitimate prayer. Prayer has to be emotional. You have to be emotional about it. You have to be asking God for things. If you make it so set, it's not going to be. And this is the exact struggle with where do we hold on this? And again, it fits in with that theme. It's not so black and white. It's not just saying the words. It's not just saying, oh, we're only going to accept those who hold kibbo, right? It's not what it's all about. It's it's coming up with some balance between issues. Yes, we want to have a certain environment in the Bay Midrash, but on the other hand, we want to have Torah being learned, and to do that, we need more people. So you have to balance all these issues, keva versus non-keva, right? Keva seems more like the truth and the straight, narrow way and, and you know, very rigid. And he's saying, no, 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 it's not. Rabbi Yoshua Omer, another thing. You're in a dangerous place and you don't really have time to daven because if you stop, you might something might happen to you. You should say a shorter version. Please save the people that are left and at every transition, God should help you, right? A lot of people struggle with transitions, right? When you're in transition, that's when you need the most help. And he's basically on a path, right? Baruch Hashem, Shomeat if you're riding on a donkey, you have to get off your donkey and, and face Jerusalem and pray. At least turn your head to face Jerusalem. If you can't even turn your head, right? have it in mind that you're praying toward there. If you're on a boat or a, or a raft, just have in mind, because there you can't really get off. Imprisoned in stocks. What? What do they say? A boat or you're imprisoned in stocks. Imprisoned in stocks? That's when they, they put you in a public area and you couldn't move your hands or feet and it was a shame. Ah, kind of okay. Thing. I see. A totally different thing. Okay. Yeah, not a, Got it. Okay. Quickly, we'll finish up this next section. The Gemara starts up and says, By the way, this connects with the 18 rows of, of white hairs. I was thinking there's this 18 number. Maybe it's there on purpose to connect it. So these you chet brachot that we say in Shmona Esrei, why eighteen? Amar lehilal bereid Rab Shmuel bar Nachmani kinyeged yud chedas karot shamar Davi b'havul Hashem bnei Elim. In the thing we say Friday nights in the Mizmor Tehilim, it says there Hashem. There's there's mentions of God's name eighteen times. Rab Yosef Amar kinyeged yud chedas as karot shamar kriyat shman kriyat shman. There's eighteen. Amar Rabbi Tanchum Amar Rabbi Shoban Levi kinyeged Shmona Esrei chuliyot shabeshidra. It's not about praising God. It's about your body. Maybe the whole idea of praying with your body and your spine is spine. Right, 18 vertebrae. The 18 vertebrae. You have to bow in tefillah until all your vertebrae are sticking out. If you see like a size of a coin against your heart, there's different ways of interpreting this. Maybe it folds, like it folds near your heart like the size of this coin. Um, some people have different explanations. Rabbi Chanina Amar, Kevan Shinianea Rosho Shuve No Tzarich. All you have to do is put your head down. That's it. Amar Rava, Behudim Etzar Nafshei Umechze Keman Dikar. Behudim Etzar Nafshei. That's only if you can't actually bend down all the way. But if you can, your head is not enough. Umechze Keman Dikara and uh, this, and it should look like you're bowing. Hane Tim Nesrei. So now they say, what do you mean 18? Tish Sarei Havyan. There's 19 blessings, okay? If you open Shmon Esrei, you'll count, you'll see 19. Am Ravi Levi, Berkat Vetztukim B'Yavne Tiknua. Ah, that 19th blessing, again, we're back to Dor Yavne. They established it in the time of Yavne, okay? And, well, then they're going to have, okay, we're going to stop here for today. We'll pick up this tomorrow. But the question is, what if we said there were 18 Azkarot of this and 18 that? Well, what's... We, they want to find some remez of how we're going to get to 19, and then we're going to see a whole story about why they instituted this blessing and all sorts of things that happened as a result.